talk to God wherever you are. Takes a few minutes just to thank God for this evening. Lift him high, lift him high. Thank you, dear Lord. We bless you, we honor you, we glorify you, Jehovah God. You are worthy of all the praise and honor. You are worthy to be lifted, oh God. You are worthy to be magnified this evening. We adore you. I magnify your name this evening, oh God. I lift your name this evening, my Redeemer. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your blessings, oh God. We lift you, we honor you, Jehovah God. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we want to thank you, we want to bless you. Thank you, Lord, for keeping us. Thank you for the same gen that you've granted each one of us up to here. We thank you, Lord, for the meeting that we are about to start right now, Lord. We commit our lives before you, the speaker of the day before you. Let your power, your presence be real in our midst today. We thank you, Lord. Bless those who are coming. Let them come and found, find this meeting on, oh God, and be blessed together with us. We thank you, we honor you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I want to say you are welcome to this Bible Marathon last day. Are you ready for the word? Okay. Shall we put our hearts together? Welcome the servant of God. Welcome, Reverend Moses. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Where did we stop last yesterday? Verse number 16, right? Verse 16, right? I'm not promising you that we will finish it today again. <laughs> I, I'm not going to promise you that we'll finish it um, because there is some critical information that lies in the book of Second Timothy chapter 2 because chapter 3 alone the first nine verses of chapter 3 will require at least two days rather two sessions the second part of chapter 3 that is chapter 10 all the way to verse 17 will require another day and then chapter 4 in itself is more benedict sort of like a benediction but not so much a benediction but it is the pouring of the heart in the last part of um, Paul's life but then also chapter 4 has got a strong marriage with Philippians chapter number 4. There is some information that you can't handle chapter 4, 2 Timothy, in isolation without making reference to Philippians chapter number 4. So our next book of study will be the book of Philippians. <laughs> it's a very lovely book, a lovely book. Uh, Colossians may take two, at least two months, Colossians alone, because of the depth of its richness. So let's continue in verse number 50, 16 that says, Shun profane and idle babblings, for they will increase more and more ungodliness. But then verse 17 says, and the message of the people who we have, have got this idol talk, they spread more like gangrene, like cancer. They spread very fast. Are you aware that lies spread very fast? Lies. Lies spread very fast. But the truth is never taken in consideration when someone listens to something, they don't fact check whether it is true or a lie. So in the body of Christ, there are these two individuals, like again I was saying, when you're raising the next generation or the people that are under or within 
a specific uh, sociological context, what they do, you must point this thing out and say, so and so and so and so are responsible. This is Hymenaeus and Philetus. They are of this sort. These are the people who are propagandist. These are the people who push certain narratives that are full of lies. Okay? So when you shut these people from your circumference, you insulate yourself from pollution and from being defiled. They have strayed away concerning the truth. Are you seeing that? Verse 18. And they are saying some very strange statements like the resurrection is already past and they overthrow the faith of some. The main goal of people who push lies is always to throw the faith of some into a limbo. So, kuna wale ambao wamezoea kueneza uvumi, wanaeneza mambo ambayo hayana ukweli. Kusudi lao ni kwamba wakue na wale walio na imani ambayo ni changa wapote. Kwa hivyo hao ndio wanaeneza uvumi ambayo lengo lake ni kuwa na itikadi potovu. Verse number 18 says um, 19 Nevertheless the solid foundation of God stands having this seal the Lord knows those who are his and let anyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity Now let's interrogate verse 20 because verse 20 is where now we get to know the status the health of a vessel but in a great house there are not only vessels of gold silver but also of wood and clay some for honor some for this honor therefore if anyone cleanses himself from the latter he will be a vessel of honor sanctified useful for the master prepared for every good work the quality of a vessel is determined by its preparation the quality of every vessel is determined by the diet that this vessel is subjected to not only the diet but also the dealings of god please look up the dealings of god because for you to get gold and silver, it goes through a very rigorous processing uh, um, uh, process. Let me use that word. It goes through very rigorous process for you to get the refined product. And so very many people within the house of God, they hate the dealings of God. And this is now where the doctrine of suffering needs to be taught in balance. Because suffering is a pathway that purifies the vessel. Are we together? Suffering is a pathway. We talked about suffering and persecution. That in itself is the refining process that produces the quality of a vessel. So if the vessel does not go through this rigorous, strenuous, and also sometimes very painful experience, that product can be wanting. And so, being a pastor for quite some time, we hardly insulate the Christians from going through suffering. Because if they don't go through suffering, you are actually producing a mutation, not an original. So when a, um, a person goes through some specific horrendous pain, pain produces, please hear me, pain produces suffering produces if you don't go through suffering i doubt whether you will be able to handle what god will bring your way 
Unfortunately, we run away from suffering because we think it is an orchestration of the devil. I don't think so. If anything, there is a way that God makes your path along the way to meet and collide with suffering. If you don't go through suffering, you will be an unrefined vessel. That is why there is another category. Apart from silver and gold, it says wood and clay. So let's talk. You subject gold to fire, you produce quality, isn't it? Subject wood to fire and clay, what do you produce? It will be consumed. So if you don't go through fire, refinement is inevitable. You won't get it. The refining, mm -mm. And so the people who run away from suffering are the kind of people who become um, half-baked individuals. They don't produce quality in them. And so the reason why we go through training, let's talk about training. Why, did you, why don't we take our children and then graduate them because they, they, they are of age without taking them through school? It's because the school that they go through, the school that they go through is now producing the refining aspect of that particular vessel. What do I mean? Even Jesus himself learned obedience through the things he suffered. Jesus learned obedience through the things he suffered. And so there are many people, being a pastor sometimes, you can get all sorts of people in a cluster, in a church. And they are all going through different situations. The much you can do is to pray for the grace of God to be sufficient that they may go through. David says, though I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. If we block you from going through that valley, do you know what we will have done? We will have objected God from the equation. We will have withdrawn God from the equation. If Joseph never went through that kind of suffering, prime ministership position will not make sense to him. Otherwise, angekuja kulipisha kisasi. Nyinyi ndo mulinipangia hivi ngojeni mtaona. But when he saw his brothers, his father, coming because of famine, he was filled with compassion. If you don't go through suffering, I'm here to bring you to this context. Refining is through suffering. Chapter 5, Romans, verse 1 to 5. It says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Peace with God. There is one aspect there about peace. It says we have peace with God. That means once you receive Jesus as your Savior and personal um, Lord, you have now made peace with God. We call it justification. But then, Chapter 4, verse 7 of Philippians says, don't go there, I'll quote it. It says, and the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding will guard your heart through Christ Jesus, also with your mind. Why is it saying the peace of God? That one is peace with justification. The peace of is now the language that God uses to communicate to you. When you are doing something, for example, and you lack peace over that thing, do you know that is God speaking to you to move away from it? The peace we are talking about is shalom. You want to engage in something, mm -mm, you, have, you lack peace, move away from it. Because if you insist, you will have violated the communicating agent that was telling you, move away from that thing. When it backfires, then utakuja kutuambia, nakuna kitu nilisikia, si kusikia, you just became rebellious. <laughs> so he says we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ verse 2 please though through whom we have access by faith into this grace which we have which we stand and rejoice in the hope uh, of the glory of God verse number 3 there's somewhere I'm heading with this so that you need. not only that but we also glory in tribulations are you seeing that 
doesn't that now communicate suffering? We glory in tribulations. We do rejoice in tribulations. We do glory in tribulation. This is Paul talking about his tribulations. And I'll show you why he goes through this. We glory in tribulations knowing that now tribulation is a producer. Suffering is a producer. It produces perseverance. Are you seeing that? And then it progresses. But then perseverance also produces what? Are you seeing that now? Pro Perseverance produces character. And character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint. Hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Again, we go back to that. Knowing that tribulations produces perseverance. I am always afraid of people who have never gone through hardship, who have never gone through problems. Those people are problematic in attitude. They are very problematic in their scope of seeing things. Whenever I meet a couple that is dating and they tell me, Sisi ya tukosanagi na wambia na wambia muka kosane leo. So that they start developing conflict resolution mechanisms. Hey, wana suwe sana. You know, marriage is not just a walk in the park. You know that, right? You imagine that nini hamukosanagi. Sikuile mtakosana. Mlangoile na mlangoile will be the exit. <laughs> so, so he says, there are vessels of honor. Vessels of honor goes through tribulation. Chapter number four. Verse number 6 of 2 Corinthians. Let me show you why Paul is talking like this. Chapter 2 Corinthians 4, 6. It is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. Verse 7. But we have this treasure. Are you seeing that? Are, are you seeing that line? We have this treasure in earthen vessels. Now, let's get a dichotomy here. <laughs> the other side is talking about gold and silver, talking about clay and wood. In this other side, is talking about treasure in earthen vessel. What is this earthen vessel? Sisi ni udongo. Binadamu ni udongo, isn't it? But kwa ndani ya hiyo udongo, there is value. That is what we are calling now treasure. In that vessel, there is treasure. Am I communicating something? Are you understanding something? In this earthen vessel, there is treasure. This vessel is subjected to decay, chapter 8 of Romans, verse 18 to somewhere verse 20. This vessel... Let's go to chapter 8, verse 18. Let me show you the reason why we are discussing this. My God, there's a lot of stuff to pull out of this scripture. For I consider that the sufferings of the present time are not worth comparing with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Verse number 19. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly awaits the unveiling, the manifestation of the sons of God. 920. But then it says this, For creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope that, 21, because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty uh, of the children of God. Pull back to verse 16, please. The Holy Spirit himself bears witness that we are children of God, 17. And if the children, they are heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer, <laughs> if indeed we 
suffer. Don't delete that line from your experiences in life. If we indeed suffer with him, that we may also be glorified with him. Are you seeing that? Huh? Chapter 2, Philippians, verse number 5. Let this attitude be in you, which was also in Christ. Talks about the mind. Verse 6. Who being in the form of God, are you seeing that? This is, we are talking about the vessel here, carrying treasure. Who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. But made himself of no reputation. The vessel is now ridding itself of divinity. It is withdrawing itself from the very essence and nature of being God and still yet being locked up in man. And then taking the form of a born servant, coming in the likeness of men. Are you seeing that line? Are you seeing that line? Coming in the likeness of men. In other words, this is God himself, but he has incarnated himself to become a man. But made himself, of, go to verse 8. So that you understand why suffering is part of the equation. And being found in appearance as man. Are you seeing that? As man. Why man? Because man is subjected to human frailty and weaknesses. My goodness. He humbled himself to become obedient to the point of death. Even the death of, cro of the cross. Nine. Therefore. Are you seeing the glorification? Therefore, God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. People want to have names and titles and a sense of importance, but they don't want to rid themselves of their human nature and their importance. So they come to church. If you don't recognize them as so and so and so and so, they get mad. They get mad. You I mean, come on. Come on. Suffering is part and parcel of the equation. If anything, you're supposed to be ignored. <laughs> Every time you feel bad because you are ignored, a lot of flesh is still in manifestation in your life. Bado, the, the process, God is still looking at you. From the position of when I was a child, I thought like a child. I behaved like a child. And so, sometimes, we go to places, functions, and they can tell you, personally, I don't even like sitting in, in front. I mean, I was not coming with my importance for crying out loud. I'm not that important. But, watch our kukalishe uko nyuma. I mean, Nikiti, for crying out loud, it was to sit, ni matanga, ni arusi. You are not the bride, you are not the groom. I mean, who do you think you are? Now, that is what is coming out there. For you to get a name, withdraw yourself from the importance. And then now you'll be given a name that is above every name. Doesn't the Bible say when you go to a banquet, don't present yourself in front. Eh? Until now, lest you go and be like, I mean, those are the things that bother men. Why am I talking about men? Because they have treasure, but in earth and vessel. Let's go to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians, Mali Tulikua, chapter 4, verse number 7. Yeah. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of... I wish you catch some revelation here. My God may be of God and not of us. Why is it talking like that? Because when you have got the treasure in you that is of God, that is when now you realize 
three times I prayed that this thing be taken away from me, but the Lord answered and said, My grace is sufficient, and my strength is made perfect in your weakness. That is when you realize that you are so weak without God. Without God, you can do nothing. Believe me, without God, you can do nothing. But now when God comes and activates and validates the treasure in you, do you know what happens? You can now give God the glory because you realize, My goodness. What are we? Paul says this, I am what I am by the grace of God. I am what I am by the grace of God. Sometimes you, you can hear people make statements, audacious statements. He ni nyumba yangu. Ile ni gari yangu. Ile ni shamba yangu. Ile pesa ni yangu. Uh -huh. As far as ownership, owners are rebels. In the kingdom of God, owners are rebels. We are stewards in the kingdom of God. <coughs> Watoto wangu, ngoja waolewe, then uta discover, ala, uni ule nimelea, mi mwenye wana niambia, before we come, talk to my husband. And that's your daughter, you can't do anything, zere kali libadilika, my God. Lakini ni watoto. <laughs> Wait until the same same car that you're saying, he ni gari yangu. Ibingirike tu mahali, then you discover, ah. Kumbe ni chuma, mafuta, maji, na plastic. Let me teach you a deep mystery about materialism. The day you devalue the materialistic component of life, that is when God now captures your heart. Why? Where your treasure is, there your heart will be. But we have put our treasures to be things. COVID taught us a big lesson. COVID ilitufundisha. Ah, there's nothing as important as your own health and family. Ah? Treasures in earthen vessels. That the excellency of the power of God may not be of us, but to me. Until God is seen in you, actually the flesh in you will be seen more. Si tunaimbaga, mimi nipungue. 30 minutes later, wewe uongezeke. <laughs> mimi nipungue. Wewe uongezeke. Do we sing that song? Uongezeke, yes. Uongezeke. Mimi nipungue wewe unless we decrease he cannot increase unless we decrease he cannot increase on a day to day basis some of us go through a rigorous refining process. You have to put yourself on a filtering lens. Would you listen? How far is my flesh alive? How far is my importance alive? When it comes to the things of God, how far am I projecting my identity more than God? Who am I representing? Am I representing God or am I representing my own ideologies? Until we go to that line of telling God, eh, mimi ni udongo. Without you, I can do nothing. Haven't you seen young boys who, they are very handsome today. And you look at them and tell them, please go look for the photos of your father when they were young. They literally looked like you. Because of the effects of wear and tear and the impact of gravity, they are now, unawaita ati waze, amechapa. You are on the way there. Young girl, look at your mother now. That is exactly what you will look like a few years to come. Not unless you are withdrawing yourself from the effects of gravity. <laughs> uh, 
So, nyenyekea mtu wa Mungu nyenyekea I'm telling you nyenyekea tu kwa sababu kuna line unaweza vuka hivi ukiinama hivi uwezi inuka lazima uinuliwe because you think you are stronger as yesterday mm 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 treasures in athen vessels hii ni neema tu bwana ni neema tu verse number 8 <laughs> I told you we will not be really finished verse two. <laughs> And then he says this about suffering. We are hard pressed on every side. Is there anybody who is hard pressed here? Umeskumwa na maisha ambako unashangaa. Is there God? Let me see. You are hard pressed. Kuna vitu inakuskuma. I am glad you are in church. I am glad you are in the best company ever. Because we are hard pressed on every side but we are not crushed we are perplexed in other words we are sometimes even confused you don't know whether you are still sane or you are bordering insanity sasa ingine ulikuwa unaangalia hivyo unashindwa ni mimi naona sawa ama ni nini what is this i mean we are perplexed but not in despair we are not hopeless next line please persecuted are you seeing that line We are persecuted. Jana ulilala ukijua hii ni sure bet imeingiana, isn't it? Kesho unaamka kitu imepinduka unashangaa. Ah, what happened? Persecution, but we are not forsaken. We are struck down, but we are never destroyed. Why? These are the treasures in earthen vessels. Next line please. always carrying about in the body can you look at that line please child of god always carrying about in the body the dying of the lord jesus that life the life of jesus we call it zoe the life of god that life of jesus may also be manifested in our body there is the next line verse 11 for we who believe i mean who live are always delivered to what please read that line delivered to what this is not physical death in some other extreme nations where uh, christianity is uh, uh, outlawed they are actually pushed towards that angle but in this side of life whereby we are subjected and delivered to death what is that death death to flesh death to your desires death to your ambitions death to your anger kama unaweza you know sometimes when i am to i'll give you a piece of my mind and sometimes we give the bad piece sometimes how many pieces do you have that you want to give people and what will remain because sometimes we good <laughs> i mean i will give you a piece of my mind i don't want that piece it may not be it may be a rotten piece You remain with your rotten pieces. I don't want them. I mean, I will give you a piece of my mind. This is death to anger, death to sinful nature, death to corruption, death to vulgarities. Say is delivered to death for Jesus sake that life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. The next line is powerful. Therefore death works in us that life may work in others my god so the processes that you subject yourself into young people hear me your parents are going through hell sometimes just to make you comfortable and let me talk to parents let us stop pampering our children please they will not die let's stop pampering our children they will never die wana so they manipulate you in school usiponiletea hii nitajimwache ajiue uone kama atakufu si ndio unamwambia wewe jiue nda kuzika i'll be there to bury you do you know they will never attempt that stupidity ah bwana sio sana but because we are now pampering our children pampering them akiitisha hii na watoto washajua they know how to manipulate you they know how to manipulate you yet you are going through death that life may work in them tomorrow they come and insult you same ule ule tu mmoja ndio ulikuwa you are pampering them daddy kuja nikuonyeshe vile unaendesha gari daddy you then tomorrow after high school they will steal your car and park it in a bar na wewe sasa ni elder church <laughs> same 
same character you were pampering yesterday. I mean, come on. Let us not withdraw suffering from our children. Let them, and I'm not saying they're extreme, but let allow them to grow through. Do you know why obedience is learned through suffering? Because when we withdraw suffering, these children will never learn obedience. And especially true sons in the kingdom of God must be subjected to some suffering. In my mentoring life and school, I never withdraw suffering from anybody. Lazimo tapitia shida. For one particular reason. One, to activate your faith. So that you may believe in God more than believing in your own abilities. You can't believe in your degree that has never delivered anything. Pakasai, it is not delivering anything to you. You have to go through suffering, then now you can look up to God. For I look up to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. Psalm 121. If we don't, if we withdraw suffering from these children, one day they'll tell you something, it will take you 15 years to recover from it. Utalala. Shindo ni mtoto wangu ameniambia hivi ukijaribu kumchapa unashindwa hata kumchapa utachapa wapi Cuz ni roho you are dealing with a spirit so death works in us that life may work in others How much death you go through is producing life Are you aware it is at the grave that life is also found mm. Ask Jesus It is the same same death that produced life. That is why we are able to call light from darkness. Death works in us that life may work in others. There are vessels of honor, some vessels of dishonor. Let us not shower, shy away from going through the processes of life. Suffering is part and parcel. Don't shy away. Watch a kuona aibu. Aibu ni dunia hii. Lakini suffering. You have to. Please don't shy away from going through suffering. Because tribulation produces perseverance. Perseverance produces character. Character produces hope. Hope does not disappoint. You withdraw suffering. You are withdrawing character. You withdraw suffering, you are withdrawing hope. You withdraw tribulation, you are withdrawing patience. Perseverance is patience. You are withdrawing endurance. Unapitia shida, sawa. That's part and parcel. If you don't go through, I mean, and some of us, you look at us, you think we have everything put together. No, we have gone through hell and we still go through. You talk to your parents, young people. Talk to them. They will tell you. They will tell you. Sometimes they insulate you from not seeing their suffering. Nowadays I tell the parents, please don't prevent your children from seeing your suffering. Apana. Let them see it. Situliso majana. Eh? You have known my suffering. Si Paula Nambia Timothy. I didn't hide my tribulations from you. No. Because this is, this is part and parcel of the training. This is part of the training. And then now, once you go through it successfully, the Bible says this in James chapter number 1. Those who endure till the end shall receive the crown of life. If you don't go through anything, mm -mm. well, when you test tube product, you become a test tube product. Katiwa uwachwe kwanza, ujua watu wanaachangwa. Pia we ushawa yachana. I mean, come on. Let it go south. Uwachwe kwanza, alafu we wanza kujuliza, my God. What was this? Uwekewe ngoma. It must have been love, but it's over now. Unashanga. What? Yes. Jana ulikuwa maembua utawalewa kesho na maembua. It's over. Go through that. Ndi ujua watu uwachwa. Ah, oh, you don't like that gospel? <laughs> it's true. It's true. 
Kuna vitu zingine sometimes they don't work out. Tell your children this never worked out. I've got very very honest parents. They kept telling me by day kitu imekata. Aja work. And this one didn't work. That one didn't work. Then I'm like, "Oh, okay." So sometimes you know you're growing even me personally. I withdraw certain privileges from my boys. Technically, for them to learn that it's not always what you want. You have to work for it. The hard working farmer must be the one to partake of the crops. Bwana sifa sana. Bwana sifa sana. Because if you don't go through that, the day you get into a position of privilege, you will abuse people. You will insult people. Believe you me, you will insult people. If you have never gone through suffering, you will insult people. You are a young HR, for example, single, not married, human resource manager, and someone who has a baby calls you and tells you, you know what? Jana to Jalala Vizuri, mtoto ako na joto. You know if you don't understand where you are supposed to be here, wachana na mtoto kuja kazi. Insensitive. But you call someone who has gone through suffering, gone through hell, but here and your HR. Unampigia simu, eh? Mtoto atakwambia hapana hata usitoke kwa nyumba take care of the baby first we will cover for your work it is your child more important than the job are you seeing the difference both of them are human resource but different experiences <laughs> why do they ask for experience before they employ you why do they ask for that experience they are trying to tell you what suffering have you gone through <laughs> What suffering have you gone through that we may now bring you on board? What value are you going to bring here? Vessels of honor. I told you we will not finish chapter 2. <laughs> we may not finish chapter 2. Let's see uh verse number 21. verse number 21 If anyone cleanses himself from the latter he will be a vessel of honor That means there is a provision that we can become vessels of honor There is a provision 2 Timothy chapter 4 chapter 2 verse 21 If anyone cleanses himself from the latter he will be a vessel of honor But what does that honor bring? Sanctification and then you become useful. Useful. The vessels that are meant for dishonor are useless. You are very very unproductive. But then in a sense you are now useful for the master, prepared for good work. Let's flip it and ask every time you read scripture you read it in reverse and read it going forward so that you understand what is the opposite that is being said the opposite is this when you are not a vessel of honor you are not sanctified so you are defiled okay when you are defiled you are not useful in the master because god is looking for productivity so you are not useful for, for the master so you are unprepared for good work So what do you produce not so good a work let's go to the next line let's see how far we'll go with this and then he says flee youthful lusts pursue righteousness faith love peace with those who call on the lord out of a pure heart intentions there are people who call on the lord but not out of a pure heart. Okay. Let's prosecute the concept of prayer, for example. When people could see calling on the Lord is prayer. Huh? Please look up. Calling on the Lord is prayer. So when people call on the Lord, they could be motivated by the suffering. <laughs> What has actually taken them to the prayer meeting is suffering. Ah, bwana sana. 
There are people whom go, they go to the presence of God to seek God because of need. My God. Because of what? Need. Shida. Matakwa. But then, in prayer, there are about almost four or five levels of prayer. There is the supplication bit of prayer where you present your needs to God. Okay? God knows what you need before you even ask. See, there is that concept. But then he says, ask and you will receive. Knock and the door will be open. Seek and you will find. See, there is that aspect of getting. It's the acquisitional path of prayer you get when you present that supplication. That is need. But then there is the upgrade of prayer. And I'm praying that we all get to this bracket. Whereby what takes you to God is the desire to know God and to have God empower you that you may solve the problem. My God, there is a revelation now right there. You don't go to God because he will give you food. Uh -uh. You go to God for empowerment. And then once you get the wisdom, the understanding, the knowledge, you will know how to get bread. Are, are you seeing that? But now, when you go to God, to seek God, to pursue God, because you saw someone, and we are guilty, Pentecostal preachers, we are guilty. We are very guilty on this. We have pushed the members in the church to look at prayer and look at breakthrough and look at blessing through materialism. So when you see someone's house, when you see someone's car, when you see someone's children, when you see someone's marriage, when you see someone's wedding, you think now it's a validation for your desire to pursue the same. Mm -mm. What if it is not part of the consecration in your life? Because the Bible, it's a very dangerous scripture to read. The poor you will always have among you. Have you ever read that scripture? Believe you me, not all of us will be billionaires. Let's sober up. Not all of us will be business people. Some will be employees. Let us sober up. Some will be career people. Administrators. But when we start pushing people, pushing people, do you know what we are injecting in them? We are injecting an tameable passion. So when you see someone's car, you feel you should have a car by now. And I've heard Pentecostal say, by this time, next year. It's a good statement, but if you withdraw suffering, if you get the car without this process, where is my parking? And it's a... <laughs> You, you, you will be walking over people's heads because it's a car. My goodness. One day, we were somewhere, and someone came. Um, I, 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 I've served God in different brackets in church. So at some point, I was in the protocol, parking cars. So this guy comes, and anza kukudunga dunga na kifungu ya Toyota. Uko kwenyu in your village, is there a car like this? <laughs> Toyota. Na sasa ukipewa helicopter. <laughs> Are you seeing where I'm coming from now? The attitude becomes something else. Is it possible, my God, is it possible that there are things that God has withdrawn to process your character? Is it possible that God has used the technology called delay as an act of his mercy to protect you from pride? Because one thing that I know about pride, it has got an accurate delivery path. It delivers downfall. Pride comes before. So now people call on the Lord not because there is need to glorify God. Uh -uh. The Bible says, and they glorified God in me. Until people glorified God, glorify God through your life. How do people brag, for example? 
eh unajua ule mtoto wangu gani si ule uinjinia ule mwingine ule lawyer hey slow down daddy slow down <laughs> but mradi wa watoto wako ni wadogo mradi wa watoto wako ni wadogo acha kuzungumza kuhusu watoto wa wale wengine who are still struggling with their faith you are growing they are this very nice they are still very good you can daddy you can still have that fun you talk to the grandparents here yeah, they will tell you enjoy that moment while it lasts time will come <laughs> when a daddy daddy utakula mr kifund na umeshapika uanze kuambia do you know the cost of living has gone high wanakuangalia what has that got to do with me <laughs> what has that got to do with me it's your problem takunja mkia yako vizuri na unyenyeke so when we call on the lord let's call on the lord from a pure heart why do you want what you are asking god for one because you have got any, and le- let me put this so that i connect this let your prayer be connected to purpose let your prayer be connected to god's agenda why do you want the degree because you want to use it to empower others now that makes sense why do you want money because you want to help educate others why do you want money because you want to alleviate poverty why do you want what you want let the motiv- mot- motivation be a connecting factor to god's agenda because every time you don't connect your prayer to god's agenda god may delay answering it what do i mean hana had an issue with penina hana was insulted she felt insulted as a woman for not having children and every time she went before god she went before god with as a bitter soul the groanings in her heart were painful and she kept going year in year out year in year out and the same priest who was there to answer that prayer was right there the motivation was wrong she wanted to balance hata wewe ujue naweza za but one day she switched the prayer agenda and told god you know what you need a prophet and i'm willing to solve that problem single girls single ladies do you know why i was telling you to place your hands on your womb and pray for your womb because you will carry a precious product that can answer to god's agenda sitoe tu watoto atujui ni nini hii nini umeleta hapa shanga eh could be carrying a terrorist did i just say that think again and so hana is being insulted by penina and the day she changed and told god i know you need a prophet that same same day conception happened that same same day the prayer was answered why the motivation was to answer to god's need my god <laughs> the motivation was to answer to god's agenda it was not for self aggrandizement it was not to appear to be leveling up with others why do you want a house because i want an altar where people can come and pray people can come and find hope people can come and be encouraged people can come and find shelter why do you want a car so that i can be helping others to go to church situambie mtachafua gari yangu flee useful go to 23 please ah yeah my time is i don't know what happens with time every time tutamalizia <laughs> hapa but avoid foolish 
and avoid foolish okay please christians let's read avoid foolish and ignorant disputes what do they produce what do they produce every time you find yourself in an argument can you give it a rating is this a foolish and ignorant dispute because every argument has got two polarities to it it is either ignorant or <laughs> foolish so you listen first that is why the bible says you should be quick to listen and slow to talk so when people are talking and talking and talking na wewe pia unaingia hiyo story unaanza kuchangia do you know you'll be blended and marinated with foolishness and stupid disputes avoid foolish and ignorant disputes i um, this is actually a, a, a what do you call this this is a, a vaccine it's a vaccine against defilement most of the time people will ask you oh kasiri kangi ambia mean kasirishwe na nini ai my emotions are very much important to me man i have to protect it because ukisikiza stories zingine unaangalia hii sasa hii ni ujinga hii ama ama zuna yona hapo hii sasa okay kwa Kiswahili basi nasema epukana na ujinga <laughs> epukana na ujinga matamshi ya ujinga and ignorant disputes knowing that they generate strife so if you want to protect yourself from from strife insulate yourself from arguments my goodness next line please and i'll show you as a servant of the lord must not do what Are you seeing that? If you find a servant of the Lord, you being servants of God, if you find yourself quarreling, where ni makelele uzushi tu unatoanga, unazua tu kelele kelele kelele. Believe you me, where there are many words, sin is not absent. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all. Hata huyu mwenye unaona huyu sasa amepungukiwa na maandiko, be gentle to all able to do what teach able to do what teach and then patient why patient next line please in humility correcting those who are in opposition my goodness those who are in opposition in humility correct them if god perhaps will grant them repentance that they may know the truth why the truth next line please this will bless you in that they may come to their senses in other words they are nonsensical their senses have been withdrawn from them that's why they are behaving in a wild manner my god that they may come to their senses and then they escape the snare of the devil who took them captive the devil himself having been taken captive to do his will Are you seeing why you should avoid sometimes foolish and ignorant disputes because they you could no unajua bwana asifiwe sana eh bwana asifiwe tena personally before i engage in some discussions i always look at the powering spirit behind once you know the powering spirit behind this one is to avoid once you know this is the powering spirit that is of peace you engage Ukiangalia kitu unaona hii the motivating spirit behind this is demonic it is either going to sow seeds of discord or it will generate strife ukishajua hiyo avoid simesema avoid because the, most of them are controlled their senses are controlled and they have been taken as a snare by the devil himself to do his will So ukishajiingiza hapo ukipigana na nguruwe when you fight with a pig one will enjoy the game one will come out dirty Ah you you go fight with a pig today look for pigs fight with them one will enjoy the game 
one will come out that year. <laughs> to do his will. Where are we? Oh, Imesha. Ah, glory to God. Ah, glory to God. Praise the Lord. Well, we thank God for Reverend having taken us through the Bible Marathon from Tuesday to today. Reverend, we appreciate you. Thank you so, so much. Can we give God a mighty hand for that? <laughs> Hallelujah. Once again, I remind you that this coming Sunday, our general overseer will be with us sharing the word. Please tell a friend to tell a friend. And please, let's come early because the meeting belongs to our general overseer. We want him to have ample time. So the exaltation time starts exactly 9 and we intend to end at 9.30 so that we have the praise team take over from there before we hand over the mic to our general overseer. Please come early. Bana Sifiwe. Shall we stand up together? <clears throat> you will pass here, put your offering here as you go out. Let's say the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. Greet one, two, three people as you are leaving the place. Hallelujah. Pass here, pass here. Leave your offering here.